Thank you for joining us today to talk about legislation to ensure that all communities have access to safe, good quality, and affordable water. Joining me today to talk about our state's water issues are Representative Sheldon Neely, representing Flint, Latanya Garrett, representing Highland Park and parts of Detroit. You'll also hear from Melissa Mays, a mother from Flint whose young son is suffering from Flint's poor water quality, and Nicole Hill, a Detroit resident experiencing problems because of that city's water issues. We're also joined by Rep. Plawecki, representing Dearborn Heights, who has a bill in our package, um, as well as Representative Canfield, representing the Thumb area, maybe joining us later, which is, and the Thumb area is also affected by this important issue. I want to note that in addition to being joined by several of our colleagues, um, we're joined by lawyer Alice Jennings, an attorney representing Detroit residents in the lawsuit regarding shutoffs, and people representing the People's Water Board. We also have a wonderful support from Michigan Legal Services, Michigan Poverty Law Program, the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, and other organizations. Although our state is the Great Lakes state and is surrounded by fresh water, Michigan residents continue to face a water crisis and it is time to act. Everyone here today knows about the lead in Flint's water and know what Detroit and Highland Park residents are facing regarding shutoffs and the huge public health impact on vulnerable families. My colleagues and I held a water affordability and safety hearing here at the Capitol in June to take testimony from residents across Michigan about our state's water crisis. After that, we convened a bipartisan work group to address the concerns that we heard from residents. And this first set in a legislative package is the result of our work. We are introducing these bills because we all believe that water is a human right, and we need to protect the residents of Detroit, Highland Park, Flint, and all Michigan communities by making sure that each resident has the right to safe, affordable, and accessible water. Our bills will not only protect our residents, but all Michiganders, because what has happened in our cities could happen anywhere in our state. One of my bills in the package will create a task force within DHHS to work with providers to develop a water affordability program based on household income and to address arrearages. Another bill coming later in this package would institute shutoff protections by creating categories of individuals protected from shutoffs and require clearer notices about potential shutoffs. This would help address the problems when more than 53,000 Detroit residents had their water and sewerage service terminated last year. As of last June, around 15,000 homes had their service restored. While financial assistance was available, many residents on this assistance are still behind on their payments on bills that sometimes were in the thousands of dollars. In addition, Rep. Plawecki has a bill establishing access to clean, affordable water as a human right and a bill to increase transparency from water providers in Michigan regarding water rates and shutoffs. Now I'll hand it over to Rep. Neely to talk about his legislation that addresses water quality. Thank you, Representative Chang, and good morning to all of you. I would like to thank all of my colleagues for being here today with this Water Coalition Accountability Package because we all really, really, really know uh, the importance of this package. Um, some of the bills that we have here today will represent the improvement of the state of Michigan and the practices in which the state of Michigan executes their duty and their due diligence in providing a great resource for our residents in the state of Michigan. But there is a human side to this. People have been impacted negatively as a byproduct of poor water quality, especially in my district, which is the 34th district, inside the state of Michigan, which is the city of Flint. The humanistic side of this, and to put a face to it, is Melissa Mays and her family her three children joining me here today, as well as her husband, Michael, is here today. And with this package that we're proposing, a bipartisanship coalition that put pieces together that will enhance and strengthen the state of Michigan, we would encourage our governor and the rest of our colleagues in the House and the Senate to move forward uh, with the package of bills. And we ask for their input, suggestions, and also to be on the side of the people of the state of Michigan. One of the things in the, they talk about pure Michigan, pure Michigan, but inside the city of Flint, residents have not been experiencing a pure Michigan. Families have been exposed to TTHM levels, lead, and other impurities inside of the water. And this is an essential necessity to life. And so I would encourage all of the media, all of the, you are here, 
to put a human face to what has happened to our community and to our state. And with that, I will turn it over to the mother of three young men, wife to a great husband, and a resident of the state of Michigan, Melissa Mays. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, and thank you to the coalition who is putting forth such an amazing package to make sure that what has happened to my family and thousands of families in Flint will not happen to anyone else in the state of Michigan. There are children that will never see their potential because of lead poisoning. There are children that were on track to becoming something great, and they've been sidetracked. My three sons were doing amazing in school and are already struggling, already. And they tell us that the full effects of lead might not be seen for five years. We all have health issues, my husband, myself, and my three sons. It's affected us all. But the fact that there's an entire generation of children that will never be maybe what they wanted to be, not without help that is not available in Flint, not without assistance that is currently not available to Flint and to the teachers, to the school system, we are already taxed we are already running thin, and the fact that something that is supposed to nourish us and keep us alive, such as water, was treated as a commodity, the quality was, was ignored, the signs were ignored, we'd been fighting this since January, and there were problems before that we found out through FOIAs. So what we're seeing is a complete disregard for human life, human safety, and the future of our children. So I am very happy and I'm pleased that there's legislation going in now and for the future to pr make sure that this just doesn't happen again because what my family's gone through is horrific. There are people that are suffering way worse than we are and we just don't want to see that happen to any other community. Thank you. Good morning everyone. Thank you for coming out. I really appreciate it. Uh, my name is Nicole Hill and I'm a resident of the city of Detroit and I'm just going to give a brief synopsis of my story. Um, I'm a single parent, a full-time college student, and I'm disabled as well. Um, the issues with the water department are tremendous. They have no idea what's going on within the walls of their own department. Um, I have presently still three account numbers in my name when I have one residence. I have had my water shut off twice, once in May of 2014, and then again in October of 2014. Um, despite the fact that in a two year period, I paid them close to $3,000. Uh, they had my water bill originally slated at over $5,000. And when questioned about a lot of the issues that were going on with the account, their answer was simply, uh, we are having a computer glitch, or we're unaware of that, or we didn't know that, or you have a leak. Everything that is brought to them by the citizens in complaint of issues concerning them is always turned away with a convenient excuse. Um, presently now, I saw that they've updated their website, which is still causing issues because Anyone who pays their payments online will probably have an issue from the water department. They don't know how to calculate payments. They don't have their system set up where you can accurately pay your bill online. They have it set up where you have to deposit whatever month you want to pay for into a cart to pay it. But yet when I went to pay my bill for three months straight, they told me I had a zero balance. And then in October, they gave me a balance for four months in total at one time and I was forced to get on a payment plan which they told me would be my bill but plus an additional $17 each month. My first bill should average somewhere around $100. My first bill was $183. So they're just completely unaware of what they're doing to their citizens. They have no disregard. They have no disregard at all for whether the person is disabled, whether the person has a health issue, whether the person has children in the home. They don't have any idea of which of the houses that they're shedding off are abandoned or occupied. They just have no answer for anything. And it's appalling because 
citizens constantly go and they seek help. They will say on their website and they will say to the media that they have all these payment programs and options. And when you go in and you seek help, the answer is, well, there are no funds or that program no longer exists. So what they're saying out in the media is not what they're telling the citizens. Um, this has impacted my life tremendously. Uh, my three children that are in the home, it has impacted them tremendously. When our water was shut off, they had to deal with the stigma of going to school and being teased by other students. Um, my daughter still to this day tells me how embarrassed she was to go to neighbors' houses with jugs to fill up for water. Uh, it changes your whole life. It changes the way you function. It changes the way you eat. It changes the way you deal with yourself hygienically because everything you do, you're thinking, how can you best conserve the small amount of water that you do have when your water shut off? Um, there's just no sympathy or no empathy, rather, to say for any of the citizens that are dealing with water issues in Detroit and in Flint as well. Um, due to everything that I've dealt with with the water department, I was forced to file bankruptcy when I had good credit. And now my credit score, I'm starting over, basically, because of a forced bankruptcy, which was the only way that I could secure that my family would continue to have water services. And I'm still taking it day to day, never knowing when they could have another slip up or they could make, make another error and my water could get cut off again. Uh, with that being said, I just wanna leave you with a quote that to me sums up what water is. And it is all living things they need water to survive. It is essential. It is our life's blood. To remove that, to remove that through aggressive shutoffs, contamination, exorbitant price and exorbitant pricing, pricing is in essence murder. This atrocity is something that we cannot allow, especially when there are remedies out there that are not being looked at by the water department, by these entities that are dealing with the contamination in Flint. There are remedies out there. There are always, if you look hard enough, remedies to rectify pretty much any matter. It's all about whether you're willing to address the issues and look at the remedies. And that is something that I am not seeing the water department do at this point in time. Thank you. Good morning and thank you, um, Nicole and Melissa for sharing your testimonies, which I am always appalled by being a mother myself. My name is Latanya Garrett. I serve in House District 7, which is a portion of Northwest Detroit and the entire city of Highland Park. I just wanna reiterate, as beautiful and as abundantly rich in water as this great state, none of our citizens should ever be concerned about access to water or the quality of water. As Michigan, Michigan legislators, it is our dual responsibility to ensure safe, drinking water according to the Safe Drinking Water Act that some of us have forgotten about. Highland Park residents are living under the threat of water shutoffs because of Highland Park officials who fail to regularly build and send out water bills. The city gets its water supply currently from DWSD, which is Detroit Water and Sewage Department and the city elected to send out the bills to their, water, uh, to their residents for the water consumption, but they failed to do so. The city did not consistently send out those water bills, and when many residents did not receive a bill, and they finally did receive one, it was for thousands of dollars. Even if you have a steady job, $3,000 may not seem like a lot to you, but it is a lot 
for someone who cannot afford it. Many Michiganders simply don't have the means to pay bills like some of us do. Due to increase of inflation rates and a stagnant wage. For instance, in Highland Park, the fact that they were not regularly, regularly billed creates a complicated and unfair hardship. I am, a, I am sponsoring a bill that would prohibit utilities from charging ratepayers for service during a period of time when the customer has not received a bill. And they have contacted the provider to make them aware that they have not received the bill, that they would be exempt from that billing cycle. I also have a bill that would decriminalize the act of unauthorized water reconnection. Let me make it clear. We are not saying that it is right to reconnect, but we need to go back and revisit why people are reconnecting water and reduce the sentencing. Currently, is it a five-year felony? We are seeking to make it a misdemeanor. Also, many of Highland Park constituents, of which are my constituents, have been fearing the possibility of foreclosure because Highland Park's debt to DWSD could be passed on to residents at any time. Finally, I will introduce a bill that will create a framework for bills to be paid in a 12-month payment plan to give res residents some flexibility to make their bills, their bills more affordable. Highland Park residents are not to blame for the city's debt to DWSD, so they should not be living under the threat of water, for uh, water shutoffs and also possibility of foreclosure to their homes. We need procedures in place to address these issues and prevent them from ha happening again in Highland Park or in any other Michigan community.